This episode of the Sleepcast is brought to you by the Iron Bean Coffee Company. Iron Bean Coffee Company is a premium small batch, roast to order, better known coffee company. They are fair trade certified USD organic and they import high quality coffee beans directly from, from countries such as Colombia, Honduras, Peru, Ethiopia, and other far off lands. Coffee's available in K Cup gift cards available and free shipping over $50. Be sure to check out all the great coffees they have over at ironbeancoffee.com. That is Iron Bean Coffee Company, America's local coffee roaster. All right, Kyle, we're uh, ready to do an Ask Sloopcast. Uh, for once, I actually remembered to change the frame. So we're already on the correct frame. So, all right, off to good a good on start. Me. Good, yeah, good. We, we've not fucked this up yet. Yet. Oh, yeah. Yet. 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 yet, yet. <laughs> uh, I already changed the frame, Sun Card. All right, Jared. This is our Ask Sloopcast question. Sloopcast episode here. So we got we got some questions here and we got a lot of people in the chat here. So this should be an entertaining episode. So let's let's go ahead and jump right into it. All right. Uh, they, they also have been they, they've dropped a couple ask sloopcast questions uh in the live chat as well i don't know if you've snagged any of those or not. yeah i'll try i'll try i'll try to grab them let's go ahead and get started okay we've got barbecue back here you're all invited welcome to the sloopcast how are you doing today kyle all right, Jared, how are you doing today as you're drinking a beer? That answers the question, right? <laughs> yeah. I love All Conway's. Right. I'm not even that much of a... I don't even drink that many reds. <clears throat> but I really like Conway's. <laughs> I don't think I've ever had Conway's. There, ser seriously? I don't think I have, no. I guess, I guess that's Irish something from Great Lakes. I guess, I, I guess that's something that I'm going to have to have when I'm back in Ohio. And I'll have to I have to stash one in the back of the fridge for you then. <laughs> All right, Jared. It only comes out this time of year. Yeah. yeah. Before before we get into our questions here, uh, it was it was a a different tone hey, hey, Kyle, than what have we actually started? Oh yeah, we did. Wow. I'm I'm sorry. I've been up for too many hours. <laughs> Please proceed. <laughs> Uh, different tone episode than what we had yesterday where we talked about Ohio State winning, then losing, and about what's for the future of Ohio State. But if you talk about other other sports here, Ohio State had two national champions this past weekend here. The Pistol team, yet okay. again, won another national champion. And then your women's hockey, their very first national title. About that, uh, yeah. you could have saved that for a sloopcast, but well, I, I wanted I mean, to open that up. That I, I wanted mean, to open uh, that at the top there. I wanted Kyle's to be po to be positive here, and wanted to make sure that that national titles do get recognized here. Well, I mean, I mean, I haven't looked at the ask sloopcast questions yet, but I presume there's some football ones in there, and like this is the, you know, hope springs eternal in the in the in the months of spring. Yeah. So like why, you know, it's just like, we, we got nothing but hope for the football team right now. So there's mm -hmm. some positivity as well. Yeah. All right. Um, let's go and get into the questions here. Uh, Buckeye Zach, uh, starting off strong here with a basketball question. Will Howard receive a lifetime contract with, <laughs> in, with, um, incentives that involved five day paid vacations <laughs> For fighting coaches. No. <laughs> how about how about no? I mean, listen, like respect or respects do. He's taken his team to the Sweet 16 when he really had this the team has no business doing that. Um uh, that's that's it though. That's all I got. <laughs> yeah. Uh 
How, how can we how can we assume this season will go for Harbaugh after signing his latest contract with Teton? Will they do well until they come to Columbus where they lose up his promise finally of putting a hundred on him? Or will Teton fall severely behind because Harbs must restructure his staff yet again? Yes, to restructure his staff. Uh and by the way, lo- lost a lot of talent too. Uh, Michigan's not going to be good next year. He lost. They they seriously gangland. They still have not hired an offensive or defensive coordinator. They are without coordinators for the spring. How? How? I just assumed I missed it or that I didn't care. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I get that the guys lost or left. That I get. I get why they left um, on multiple levels. But seriously, they still don't have a coordinator. So I see here. So I see here, Jared. uh, They they don't have a second co for either side. So I see a co-defensive coordinator slash defensive back of uh, Steve Klinkscale. And then a co-offensive coordinator slash quarterbacks and Matt Weiss. But yeah, there's no other co to go along with them. Well, I mean, typically the co means like junior most of the time, right? Isn't, I mean, isn't that essentially what that means? Junior offensive coordinator, junior defensive coordinator. Uh, there's not a senior for either yet. That's insane. That yeah. that's Oh my god, that's insane. How do you how do you let that happen? You seriously don't have an offensive or defensive coordinator going into spring ball? That's I I I, I don't have words for that. Can you uh, Kyle, can you honestly imagine what Ohio State message boards and Twitter and everything would be like? Right now, if Ohio State was going into spring ball without an offensive or defensive coordinator, I mean, either, let alone both. Mm-hmm. I don't know, man. Oh, I, gangland. I, I 100% get why the other guys left. I, I get yep. that. It's, but that was how many weeks ago? How many months ago? That's that is unacceptable. Is there, is there anybody left? Yeah, I mean, not 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 good options. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, yeah, but are, are there good options left? Maybe, like if you can convince someone to leave. I mean, there's probably like some young guys who you could probably snag who are currently coordinators at your Sun Belt, Mac, whatever type schools, mm-hmm. and which probably will end up being what he does. But speaking of, yeah, good exactly. Decisions. Austin, um, hell, they could at least do an internal promotion. Yeah. Like take the freaking co's off of those guys. Yeah. Uh, speaking of good t- decisions, Nomad asks, was it a mistake for Ohio State to bring back Urban Meyer? Yeah. So, one of the things that Ohio state announced recently, um, they're setting up basically a fund that will pay Ohio state athletes, presumably football players, (laughs) maybe basketball players, wrestlers, maybe some pistol guys. I don't know. Um, basically pay them for their time to do charitable work. And one of the people who are, on this board of this new organization um, is Urban Meyer. Now, especially since he's left Ohio State, there have been issues come up. Um, Of course, quite frankly, there were issues before he got to Ohio State uh, where issues came up. Um, Yeah, the Schottensteins are also involved. Absolutely. Absolutely. But I think that that's part of it, right? 
where mm -hmm. it's a lot of well-connected people. The board is made up of a lot of well-connected people. So that's why you bring in an Urban Meyer guy, because he's because if you have a dinner or you have a meeting or whatever, and people will show up to it just to like be across a, a, a table from Urban Meyer. Right. Like that. Isn't it their foundation he is on the board for? Um, well, I mean, I maybe I, I don't know the answer to that question, to be honest with you. Um, the. I mean, their foundation, the foundation is, I would, I would hope, <laughs> and like an independent entity, right? Uh, now, they had maybe founded it, um, but it, it also would, I would assume, need to function as an independent, like, nonprofit entity. But I, mm -hmm. that's, that's me assuming and not knowing. But yeah, there, there's, uh, there's a bit of a, a stink on urban Meyer right now. And so you have to ask, is this an appropriate thing to do? But yeah. like his, his job is to be fundraising and who is better set up in Columbus to be a fundraiser than urban Meyer. So I get it. Um, if you have a moral issue with it, then I also get that. Mm -hmm. But if you're trying to set up a foundation to raise money, it does make a lot of sense. Yeah. Uh, Nomad also asks, with Adams getting traded to LVR, Las Vegas Raiders, do we see Olave going to Green Bay? Possibly. Possibly. Um, haven't dug super deep into the mocks yet. Um, but I think Green Bay has been a target for him f or uh, someone targeting him for a while. Um so yeah, I think that's I think that's always been a possibility. So yeah, I uh, and gang, I looked down at the chat. Gangland says uh, he thought that's where he was going all along, and he said it months ago. So yeah, uh, Gangland and mm -hmm. I are largely on the same wavelength there. Yeah, I see. I see one here where Alave could go as high as like the eleventh pick to the um, the uh, Washington team. I keep forgetting they're the commanders now, but, <laughs> but yeah, you, well, you can keep maybe. calling them the Washington football team if you want. Yeah, maybe, maybe. Uh, let's see. Another question from Nomad. Should program developed success be graded on how many draft picks you have or how long your alumni are in the NFL? Um, no, you, you should be, your the, the health of your program should be based off of your achievements on the field. Now, that being said, it is still incredibly important to have put guys into the NFL because that's a one of the key selling points of getting talent to then win games on the field. Like it's a it's a it's a it's a self-feeding thing, right? Like you bring in good players, good players win you football games. Those players go on to be good players in the NFL. Kids see those kids do well in the NFL. Mm -hmm. And then the next generation and generation, I mean, that the next group of kids, even generations too too big of a word. But just like the next, you know, the, the kids who are five years, six years younger than the other kids. They, they come back up around and they say, oh, Ryan Day coached who? Cardell Jones? Not Cardell Jones. Um, Haskins and Justin Fields and all of these guys. It was, it was actually Haskins that I meant to say gangland. Um, they're, they're very similar players. Uh, so I sort of confuse them in my head sometimes. But the... So like, oh, you, those guys did fantastic. I want to go play for that guy. So, uh, you know, and that, that's why Ohio State was having trouble recruiting cornerbacks when Coach Combs left and why mm -hmm. they started rec recruiting great cornerbacks again when he returned. Because all, all he has to do to recruit 
the next batch of corners is to walk into a living room and say, here's how much my guys are making in the NFL right now. Yeah. I haven't really looked at much at the mock draft either, but maybe this is me biased. I, I don't know, but why is Hutchinson rated number one or going number one to Jacksonville? Doesn't Jacksonville need like an offensive lineman? Uh, because he absolutely slaughtered Ohio State when everyone was watching. It's the Tim Biakapatuka rule. If a Michigan guy slaughters Ohio State, they automatically go in the first round. That's it's the Tim Biakapatuka rule. Okay. Really, any chance I can get to say Tim Biakapatuka? Uh, now let's see. Gangland asks: Predict the biggest surprise name to come out of spring camp this week. Specifically, this week. Oh, um, specifically this week. That's mm-hmm. an interesting question. Um, my first instinct is to say a safety. I, I think that they're going to be picking. I, I think one of the things, cause, cause like if we hear about it, right. If we hear about it during week one, it's largely because the coaches will want us to hear about it. And they're going to try to be promoting their defensive guys. They, they're they're going to try and sort of relieve the stresses of the fan base by sort of saying, hey, you know who's looking really good right now? Court Williams. Hey, you know who's looking really good right now? Lathon Ransom. You know what I mean? Like that's, I, I think that's largely what you're going to see. Um, do I mean Lathan? Yes, I do mean Lathan. Uh, the Austin, are you new here? I know you're not. I know you're not. <laughs> um, yeah, I think I think it's going to be somebody on the safety side too, or a um, linebacker for that matter. Yeah. Ransom is definitely a definitely a good pick. Uh, yeah, I, I probably would go with Ransom. Would be would be mine. He he really shines through here and and um really tries to put him into that top two three in the in that safety rotation there. I think uh, I think here's general. another narrative you'll hear over the next couple weeks will essentially be like. Man, you know, you know, what's, you know, it's great right now. Cody Simon. Oh man. Like he's really thriving in the new system. That, that, oh man. Eichenberg is really thriving in the new system. Like that, that, that's a phrase you're going to hear a lot, right? Like, Hey, those guys who you already decided that you didn't like, they are really thriving in the new system. So that that's a way that's just a way of saying like, hey, they're actually going to we're going to try and tell you that they're playing really well, but we're going to do so in such a way that doesn't disrespect um, what they did last year or any of the coaches from last year, because they're, they're not going to they don't want to disrespect anyone yet. But but you'll hear the phrase thriving in the new system or something close to thriving in the new system a lot over the next couple of weeks. Mm-hmm. Yep. All right, Jared, let's take a quick ad break here and we'll answer the rest of the questions here. So Sun Card, no. You get your scrappy out of here. You you take your scrappy back to Scooby Doo Land. I couldn't think yeah. of Scooby Doo. This this is what happens when I record a podcast. I forget words like Scooby Doo. All right, Jared. Uh, all right. Uh, let's see here. This episode of the Sloopcast is brought to you by a joint message from Stuart E for US Vet and Nomad. Uh, we want all you fellow veterans out there listening to know and understand that you are never alone. If you need help for any reasoning, any reason with anything, there are options for you to reach out to to someone to talk to. If you need assistance, 
and you don't know who to call, please call the Veteran Crisis Hotline at 1-800-273-8255. Again, that's 1-800-273-8255. Stay strong and get the help you need. Uh, why don't you go ahead and read that back one more time, just that last part with the phone numbers and the and the final tag, just in case anyone needs to hear it. Yes, if you need assistance and you don't know who to call, the Veteran Crisis Hotline is there for you at 1-800-273-8255. Stay strong and get the help you need. By, by the way, uh, Nomad paid us for that ad read. Um I can't take that money. Please tell me where I can donate that money to. I can't, I can't accept money for that ad read. Um, let me know who or where I should donate that money to. I didn't know that's what the ad read was going to be. Uh, so I, I can't, I can't take money for that. So one of you guys let me know where that money needs to go. Absolutely. All right. Let's, let's get into some other uh, questions here, Jared. Uh, starting with, Austin Formation. Uh, Austin says, who has the best chance of taking the spot of a current upperclassman who started last year? <laughs> I'm sorry to go back to this, but uh, safeties. <laughs> um, Maybe linebackers. <laughs> well, so many different Buckeyes started at linebacker last year. That's hard. to. <laughs> <laughs> well, that makes it easier for me then. <laughs> um. The yeah, I mean, because I think I think we're going to see like potentially up to three starting safeties, and um, I, I have a feeling that one of the starting safeties from last year won't be one of those three. <laughs> um, uh, thank you, Austin. Uh, that's uh, I, I might do that. Um, the. But yeah, the, uh, yeah, safety, once again, I'm going to say, um, especially, especially if like you have Proctor, right? So Proctor is one of your starting safeties, but outside of that, I don't know if like Bryson Shaw is going to start next year. Um, you're bringing in the safety from Oklahoma state you have some younger safeties sort of maturing into their own, you know, your guys we already mentioned, right? Uh, so I, I feel like for sure we're going to see some new faces at safety. Woo yep. I, I McAllister, so thank you, Austin. My 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 podcast yeah. brain is going at <laughs> snail speed right now. All right. Uh... Austin also says, if three Ohio State players were in traffic light, who would be, who would, who would be each color and why? Huh? <laughs> what, Austin? <laughs> that was Austin? That was Austin. <laughs> he says it's a valid question. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Um, green. Red. Oh, okay. See, Kyle, what what does it say about our personalities that you started with red and I started with green? Um, uh, so I, red because of Ohio State. I start, <laughs> but green is go, which is more positive, right? Um. So, uh, so we'll, we'll do what Kyle said. Red. <laughs> Red's a defensive player, right? It means stop. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Pick it's, maybe your favorite defensive player that's going to be on the on the team this year. Maybe a, maybe a JTT, maybe a Cody Simon, maybe a I don't know who 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 you want to pick here. Denzel man. Burke is another good name. Uh, pick that one out of the chat from Austin. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I I, th I think the easiest one is probably Tui Malau. I, I think it's probably yeah. the the best best one there okay uh, um i feel like on the green side i feel like green means I, go and go makes me think of a wide receiver right jsn jsn yeah i i think i think it's jsn um and then tui malau, tui malau sun card 
and then yellow because like what's yellow right yellow means well maybe you're stopping and maybe you're going and you're just not sure yet so it has to be Cade Stover because like Ooh. is he offense is he defense I don't know I like that so, one actually so it's like got to be Cade one. Stover yellow could be <laughs> some, some cards See, going a different this way. was a good Ye question yellow, you know what Austin yep. you're right it was a good question yeah Yellow, yellow could be for like flags. So like if we had a um, and like an offensive lineman who tend to hold a lot or false start a lot, that could be uh, we've, yellow. We've had some of those in the past. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Gangland Isaiah Prince. Isaiah Prince would be one of them. <laughs> yep. All right. Uh, let's see. Uh, another question from Austin: Which true freshman not named C.J. Hicks? will have the most buzz this spring. Freshman, not named CJ Hicks. I feel like CJ Hicks, just because he's he's a reclassify, right? Like, um, that's, I just, it always, I always just want to be a little bit cautious, like throwing too much, too much hype his way. Um, I don't know, Kyle, what, who, who are you thinking? Why, uh, why not, why not the other one? Why, why not the other linebacker? Why not Powers? Why well, not Powers? Do we know? I still am not 100% sure where he's even starting. I guess not necessarily that that matters too much. Mm -hmm. um, so, like, a lot of great talent at wide receiver, but there's gonna it's going to be so hard to get on the field as a wide receiver. So I, I kind of don't want to pick any of them. Um yeah, I, I feel like there's offensive there's a line's going to be pretty set. I think. Mm -hmm. I, um, I think there's a lot of there's a lot of upperclassmen that uh, yeah, it's going to be hard for these freshmen to really make a splash. See a sun card. Make a na make a name, make a name this year. So, I I doubt we may hear hear a lot, but with with the loss of Ruckert, maybe we hear something from Christian. Maybe get to see the field a little bit more than other freshmen. Because of just not that many tight end experience from last year returning. Maybe we'll hear something from Christian. Gangland would like to remind you that uh, Joe Royer exists. And that yeah, G. Scott I, I, is, as far as we know, G. Scott is still at tight end. In fact, he just changed his number to 88, which is a very tight end number. That um, is, yeah. Uh, I don't know, Austin, what number is Christian? We literally talked about it last week, and I've already forgotten. 81? Oh, you're guessing. Guess you fuck. Um, no, 88 is uh, is the number G. Scott moved to. Yeah. Bennett Christian, 85. 85. Also a very tight end number. Austin, you're very angry today. You're very <laughs> angry today. Like more angry than than usual. All right. Well, we're we're going to move away from Austin questions. We're going to go to Gangland next here. <laughs> uh Gangland says, "What position would Jar Jar Binks play?" He sounds like he he looks like a tight end. <laughs> I really think that's like the only position is tight end. Guys, he's literally an amphibious creature. He has to be the water boy. You've never even, you don't, you don't, you can't mentally picture who Jar Jar Banks is, Austin. I mean, like how? Okay, I'm moving on. I'm moving on. All right. Uh, let's see here. Some card. All right, Jared, this one's for you. What radius defines local beer? I mean, that's really up to you, right? Like, to me, like, there, there's there's two stages of local, maybe three stages of local, yeah? Um, there's, like, Columbus, there's Ohio, and then there's, like, you know, regional. Like so, like, I bump it out Ohio. there. yeah. It's just, and maybe even a little bit further out, like maybe counting, you know, 
Illinois or maybe even, you know, Wisconsin, Minnesota, um, Pennsylvania, uh, nothing good comes out of Kentucky or, or Michigan. And, and yes, I know founders and bells, but uh, let me, let me live in that delusion that those wonderful, wonderful breweries aren't from the state of Michigan. Um, so I, so it's like three stages, right? And of course I say that and I live in Columbus. So like I have a wonderful selection of beers from my city. If you if you live in a more rural area, then like your first step might be like the state within your region, right? Like I like beers from Northeast Ohio because you can't necessarily say, you know, just Cleveland or whatever. I would say if I'm going to put a like a number to it, I would say within within a three hour drive is local. That's also fair. Me. I think that's also a fair way of saying it. Uh, Buckeye Zach wants to know why you, Jared, are a traitor. Listen, I don't know what y'all's deal is. Because like y'all are mad at me because in my in my official sloop cat bracket, I I picked Villanova to beat Ohio State. One, I I was right. So let's just get that out of the way right away. I was right. Number two, unless all of you little bastards down here in this chat, wow, picked Ohio State to win the national title. Then, you, then you're one. If you pick the highest to win a national title, you're stupid. Two. Two. You're a hypocrite. Just because I said they'd lose in this round as opposed to the next round. What that makes me a bad Ohio State fan for acknowledging that they weren't going to beat a number two seed in the tournament? Should I have picked? I'm stealing this joke from Suncard. Should I have picked Ohio State to occupy all four spots in the final four? Is that what it would take to make you bastards happy? It appears that way, Jared. Saying that. Funny enough, if they won this game, they probably make it to the Elite Eight. Uh, they were one and one against Michigan um, during the regular season, so. 50 uh, 50. Maybe. All right. Um, a probably a lot odd... of that would depend upon if Kyle Young was able to play. Beach to it, Gangland. Yeah. Um, here's a. Here's, um... I think this is our last question we have here from Gangland. A bit of a out of left field, n nothing at all that we've talked about here, but he wants to know, Jared, would you punch the Notre Dame mascot? See, that's hard because that's like an actual human, right? <laughs> it is, yes. Well, so are mascots. There are humans in them. Right, but the, the, the face is so big and foamy or what, like, you're not actually going to hurt the person, right? Like how <laughs> this actually hurts me to to acknowledge this, right? Yeah, come on, Jared Brutus. <laughs> well, I'm just I have to acknowledge that there's a human being inside of Brutus, which makes me sad. Like I am such a child when it comes to Brutus that like I don't want to acknowledge that there's just like a male cheerleader in there. Like I don't want to I don't want to live in that world where I have to give up <laughs> that. Yeah, exactly, Austin. Um, but like, how far away is that? Is that cheerleader's face from Brutus's face? Or in the in the case of some mascots, there's so much foam there. Mm -hmm. Like you're, if you punched any mascot in the face outside of Notre Dame, uh, West Virginia, there's a few other ones, right? Also, any of the ones that have like living animals like Tennessee or whatnot, but I assume we're sticking to humanoids. Um, 
th then you're not going to hurt that person. You're not going to hurt the actual person in the suit if you punch a mascot in the face, except for like Notre Dame and West Virginia and a couple others. A very punchable face, Austin. Very, he's a leprechaun, for God's sakes. <laughs> uh yes 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 uh by the way all this goes for disney characters too i'll say it in, in this this by the way this by the way also works for disney characters because like the vast majority of the female like the the the, the princesses are women so you can't punch them anyway not so there's like there aren't many guys who's whose faces are exposed, right? Most of the people whose faces are actually exposed at Disney are the princesses. So like double don't punch them. Not because their faces are actually exposed, but because they're women. What does I lied? I'm 33 mean gangland. I don't know what that means. Um, uh, Buckeye Zach wants to know if the Easter Bunny. Oh, that's right. That's right. Uh, is the Easter Bunny real? Uh, I mean, like the myths we tell are real, right? He, he's real because it's a story we tell. Yeah. He's he's real as a cultural icon. I answered it. All right, Jared. That's that's all the questions we have for our Ask Sleuth Cast episode. Anything else? I want to go back. I want to go back to. Was it Austin's question about which true freshman would have the most hype? Mm -hmm. I, I've I've been staring at the list ever since. I've been staring at the list of true freshmen ever since you brought that up like while we've all been talking about punching Santa or whoever in the face. Um, yeah, I think it might be Hicks. And I Austin said it. I'm like, Oh, but he's, he's a reclassify. It's still, but I can't pick him his now. Question, his, his question said, which true freshman not named Hicks. Oh, I, f I forgot that part. Okay, I'm going to go with Caden Curry then. I'm going to go with Caden mm. Curry. All right, Jared. All right, that's the end of the episode. Go ahead and take us out. Gangland, I think Grace is going to be great, but I just I have a hard time seeing any of the freshman wide receivers making a huge impact this year. It's... Bob and Fleming and JSN and Ballard and Abuka and Harrison. Good Lord. Good Lord. And by the way, if it's any of them, I think it's Burton. If it's any of the freshman wide receivers, I'm going to say it's Burton. But I don't think it's any of the freshman wide receivers. I just like we'll see them play. They'll get on the field. But as far as like making some sort of huge impact, I just don't see it. All right. Uh, Florida Buck, who is our resident insider on the board, says he's got some stuff coming. Uh, We're about to end the episode. So um, hurry. <laughs> he said all of. All of his info, I'm not going to use that word publicly. All of his info is uh, basketball related and that there'll be nothing more until August. And that Jimmy Soto smells good. Okay. That's, that's what we got from our resident insider. I, I'm, I'm everyone. I'm, I'm hope, I hope you enjoyed our Florida buck portion of this episode. Um, I'm, I'm moving on. Kyle, do you have anything in Kyle's corner? Um, uh, the crew, crew ended up with a one, one draw. 
still undefeated or still has not lost for the year. That's what they undefeated have, means. Yep. They now have eight points in their four games. So, yep. Yeah. See, see yeah. how <laughs> I guess it's better, better than a, than a loss here. Um, I'm looking, um, looking, looking for their, their schedule. Cause I wasn't quite prepared there. <laughs> so they will play. Looks like they're taking this weekend off here. They yeah. will be playing April 2nd in Columbus to host Nashville. What time is that? 6 p.m. Go to that. Balls. You should. All right. You should. You I, should well, I don't think I can is the thing. You should. I, I want to. You should. It's literally my birthday. I would like to do that. Treat yourself. I can't. Treat yourself. I have to work, Kyle. I have to work. Not not all of us uh, get you to work travel on a Saturday? for work. That particular Saturday, yes. Oh, that sucks. Uh huh. Sure does. All right, that's it, Jared. That's all okay. I got. All right. Um, Jared was draw. Okay, everyone in the chat now <laughs> seems to be very confused about the fact that I was actually born. They maybe I was dropped from space. Um, thought I climbed from a hole in the ground. Uh, Hellfire and Brimstone Space Lab. Um, I, I don't Kyle. Should I okay? At, uh, ask Kyle. Hashtag Ask Kyle. Should I take any? Should I take all of this as an insult or a compliment? Just take it as a compliment, Jared. Just okay. take it as a compliment. Oh, uh, Florida Buck says I don't actually exist and that I'm just your puppet. Uh, no. <laughs> I don't like the ramifications of <laughs> Kyle puppeting me and what exactly that would mean. All right, let's 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 end the episode, Jared. <laughs> yeah, we're ending the episode on that one. Uh, the uh, Dan Auerbach, again, we're doing Dan Auerbach for both, both episodes this week uh maybe all episodes this week if we decide to drop a a late a late episode in the week if we do that uh sometimes we do sometimes we don't and uh but with all that being said i'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer listen to local music and of course support your local podcasters once again this is dan Auerbach.